Hi, in this next video, I'm going to talk to you about thoracic outlet syndrome and some of the underlying pathologies that can affect this neurovascular bundle. So when you think about the, the name, the TOS, so thoracic outlet syndrome, then what it compromises is the neuro, which is the brachial plexus between the C5 and the T1, and the vascular, which is the subclavian artery. So they come out via the thoracic outlet because you've got like the spinal cord that's within the thoracic inlet. So these come out through the space called the interscalene triangle, which is formed by the anterior fibers of the scalene and the middle fibers of the scalene and the first rib. So the structures will, will come out and when they come out, they'll go over the first rib. The clavicle is located, so it goes under the clavicle and then underneath the pectoralis minor, then naturally on its way down into the arm. So many patients will have perceived altered sensations. They might have temperature changes in the arm, maybe due to position. They might say my arm is in the air for a period, like a, an electrician working on site, changing uh, the fixings. And he might talk about he has this weird sort of sensation to his arm. So more might be coming from this area in here. Now there's many causes. This came about in the late 1800s, 1861 I think. And uh, there was a 26 year old female who was having this symptom or quite a, uh, an increased symptom in the arm. And then she had surgery for what they called a cervical rib, which is pretty rare. So for instance, where the rib is located on the T1 here, and it comes across as the first rib, then you can actually have a projection, like my finger would be the cervical rib that would actually form within this sort of space. And I think I've only ever seen two or three of these, and most of them have been surgically removed. And Michael uh, Coots, um, he was the surgeon that um, operated on this uh, at that time. Now, the symptoms you might get will be anything neural or vascular. Okay, so if it's in the whole of the hand, it might be more vascular. If it's two specific areas, then it might be more neurological. And some of the things that can compress it is the cervical rib, which I briefly mentioned. You can also get what we call a first rib or an elevated first rib or an inspirated first rib, they would also call it, where the scalenes is lifting it up and it affects the lower cervical plexus. Also, the pectoralis minor could also get compressed. Um, and also the clavicle can be the position due to say a military posture could compress the vascular bundle as it leaves or the neurovascular bundle as it leaves that sort of space. And that is a condition that the fibers of the scalene can thicken. They do call it a scalenus anticus syndrome as well, where it can get caught within this sort of area. So we're just going to run through some tests. And the first one we're going to cover is what we call the Adson's test. So the Adson's test is I'm going to palpate the radial pulse. So I'm going to bring the arm into 90 degrees of abduction, palpate the radial pulse and bring the arm back. So 20 degrees of horizontal extension. And then I'm going to ask my patient to turn the head this way. So she's going to rotate on a little bit of extension, maintaining the palpation of the pulse. So I will say to my patient, take a breath in please. And to hold the breath, hold it for a few seconds. And I will feel for any changes in the pulse and relax. You can also, if you want to, ask your patient to take a breath in, and then I can rotate it to the opposite side to see if its symptoms are changing and relax. So this would normally indicate the first rib that's elevated and also by the scalenus activation. If we asked our patient to bring the shoulders back and down and to hold that for 30 seconds to see if any symptoms come onto the hand, you can also palpate a pulse if you want it then this would be what we call a costoclavicular syndrome. Relax. If my patient lifted her arm into full abduction and she held that for 30 seconds to a minute, then that might also bring on symptoms. And then this typically is what we call the hyperabduction test and might indicate pectoralis minor. In 96, there was a test by the uh, chap called Rue. And then what he suggests is place the arms into the no I surrender position and then can you open and close the hands? It's quite a, a long test because the patient would be asked to, can they maintain this motion for three minutes? Okay, so I'm not sure exactly whether all my patients would want to do this. And if they're unable to do it for uh, a minute or two, then you might find it could be a vascular issue and relax. So that's known as the ruse test. If I palpated the first rib, 
And I ask my patient to breathe in and to hold the breath just for a sec and then to breathe out. I'm looking to see whether the first rib rises on the inhalation and whether it depresses on the exhalation. So we covered thoracic outlet syndrome uh, and the, some of the potential causes of the treatment will be in a, in a later video. So I hope you enjoyed the video on TOS and please if you get a chance subscribe to my channel.